What's up guys? Today I uh, figured I'd do a video more or less for myself so I remember this stuff. I uh, back in January had an aquastat replaced with a hydrostat so uh, everything seemed to be working good and then I had to replace a PRV valve and I got that set up but you know the, the furnace is short cycling what it means is it will no sooner run and then it will stop run again and it's it's annoying as hell and it was actually quite cool in here for the last two weeks so today I had chance to actually take this off it's a Honeywell uh, what is it the T87F 1800 Z so up here you got your numbers this is your settings so I got it set at 64 and a half and then down here is it's reading 74 degrees uh, this is the old mercury type and I prefer these if yours has been on here a long time it's best to take it off the wall there is a screw here it's just a plastic mount and then down here there is another screw and then up here is another screw this one is R this one is W um, doesn't matter with the polarity but these two wires two wire thermostat runs down to the aqua or the hydrostat but the important part here for me at least was this and this is the assessor um, the heat assessor so it assesses behind here there's another little bimetal coil like this here it's behind here so it assesses what the temperature is going to be and it'll shut it off so it doesn't overshoot heating the house now this right here a little pointer here was set you can see there's a scale here and then it says longer run times so this dial if you push it this way this is an amp scale so if it goes this way your furnace is going to run longer if this way it is going to run shorter now I've had several furnace guys out and not one of them had said shit about this so it was <sighs> If you feel temperature swings like you're like back in January, February, you know, seem good, but the furnace, you know, it's colder outside, so it's calling for heat. With that said, it's now March. Well, actually April, but March, you know, we still had some warmer temperatures and the furnace wasn't running much as much. So, um, the way you got to do this, and we'll take a look at the hydrostat, but the hydrostat is rated for two amps. You take two amps, and if yours is three, you'll take three amps. You'll times that by 1.2. So in my case, that is going to be 2.4. And if we look here on the scale, uh, let me get a pen. Okay, so if we look right here, there is a 2. This, this pointer was pointing barely over 2. And right where it's set is 2.4, right behind 2.5. And then the next one is 3. So this is an oil system. And... Uh, that is the way you calculate your amperage. If you don't know your amperage, what you can do is get a clamp uh, meter. You'll set it on AC and you'll have to isolate your white wire, which this happens to be red, this happens to be white. But in my case, whoever put this in way back in the day, they used green so green is represented 
and I use some heat shrink tubing down on the hydrostat to indicate which is green. They don't have polarity like I said, but what's important is the white wire and uh, actually the way you could do it is take a piece of wire, wrap the wire around the C-clamp and we'll get a shot of that uh, a little bit later what that meter looks like. You'll wrap the wire 10 times and you'll just touch you can touch it right here on R and then W. If this came out to 3 amps or 2 amps you simply uh, divide that by 10 and say it was 3 amps well that would be 3 or 0 0.3 amps and you would set this dial here 2.3 amps and that's how many times your boiler will run so it should run like three times in an hour mine happens uh, being I have uh, the hydrostat at 2 amps one two times 1.2 gives me 2.4 that's where I got this number from that's why it's set at 2.4 so it should run the boiler should run about two and a half times in an hour so we'll go down look at the hydrostat now okay so here's the hydrostat here's our TNT this is the white and then hopefully you can see the green what you would do is take your um, clamp multimeter uh, set it to AC volts and it's going to be awful hard to get it on that little wire so what you can do like I said is wrap a piece of wire around it 10 times and then touch here and here or upstairs doesn't matter um, this should be between 24 and 30 volts I'm getting 32.3 volts here also uh, if you wanted to test the voltage like L1 right here your black is your hot and L2 is your neutral as C1, C2 and then B1, B2 you would touch uh, right here your multimeter set to AC you would put the ground here and then you would just touch one probe to L1 make sure you're getting 120 volt C1 your furnace so you'd have to turn the thermostat up and then touch here after the furnace is running you can hear the circulating pump run you should get 120 volts there or thereabouts and then on your burner L1 stands for line in so that comes from your panel and then uh, circulating pump comes from the circulator and then your burner here you got you know B1 B2 so black would go to B1 and you should get a hundred and twenty volts right here or thereabouts so all my voltages were good and then up here low limit 160 high limit 180 and then I have one zone so I have it set to one zone if you have one of these and you're not having enough hot water you can simply turn that to off doesn't need to be set to one now before we move on to uh, the clamp multimeter down here this is your degrees and as you saw in the hydrostat it was reading what 167 this is 160 so when this drops below as the digital your furnace is going to kick on and run it's not calling for heat it's heat in the water inside your boiler this is your pressure gauge so you want it between 12 and 20 or 14 and 20 15 and 20 30 you're gonna have your furnace blow off and that could be your blow off valve here which I just replaced and uh, that's fine your expansion tank if you tap on this it should sound hollow this can fill with water and that can raise the pressure on your uh, gauge here and make that blow off valve back there you know spurt out water so what 
was happening to me is I kept raising in pressure so I put a new PVR valve on like I said and then you also have a auto water feed here which is also rated uh, the range is 10 to 25 psi that feeds into your boiler so short uh, cycling will cause your pressure to rise because you're, you're on and off, on and off, on and off, and your room temperature is going to fluctuate massively. Uh, it, it's going to be either too hot at times or too cold at times. So it's important to watch this. You know, we're right around 15 now. Uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, so, and then it'll be 18, 20, so we're fine with that. If this uh, raises too much, you have a valve that comes off, you'll open it up and put a bucket under it, and you'll see the needle fall, and that's one way to lower your pressure in your boiler. So let's uh, go up, take a look at this uh, clamp multimeter, and again, it has to be AC. All right, so here's that clamp. So if you're a Prime member, you get it for $21.99, and uh, you got to take into account what you want this for. So 4,000 counts, only AC current, it's only going to do AC current. You want the 6,000 counts, it's going to do AC and DC current. So if that's what you're looking for, you're you know, going to pay $47.99. So uh, this is the one I got. And right here is that clamp. They, you know, it's like a pair of pliers, okay? So the white and then the green wire, you would feed the white wire, if it's long enough, through there. And it, it's not just for this. It's you know, to check amperage on whatever. So you put one wire through there only. And you open that up by squeezing that part right there down here is your readout so in my case it was two amps you bring the calculator up you type in two and then times 1.2 and uh, that gives you 2.44 amp current draw and uh, if you had uh, a reading of 3, you would take 3 times 1.2 and you would set that little copper pointer with like a ballpoint pen to just a hair above, like a cun hair above 3.5 and that's all there is to it. 